Nalanda University. The very utterance of this name carries us away to the ancient heart of India's intellectual legacy. In the year 413 AD, during the reign of Gupta dynasty, Nalanda University was born amidst the enchanting landscapes of Rajgir Bihar. It soared as a global epicenter of wisdom, a brilliance later dimmed by tragic events of the 11th century. This venerable stronghold of higher learning nestled in Bihar, the ancient heart of the Magadha kingdom, stands as India's second oldest university, following in the footsteps of Takshashila. It sprawled over 14 hectares, a sacred citadel of knowledge from the last centuries of the before common era until the tumultuous Turkish invasion in 1193 AD. Nalanda beckoned students from as far as Tibet, China, Greece and Persia. And while the recorded history traces Nalanda's origins to the Gupta dynasty, extending back over 2,100 years, recent archaeological revelations pushed its inception even further, beyond the horizon of 1200 BCE. Remarkably, all ancient Indian universities, including Nalanda, adhered to highly formalized Vedic methods of learning. It was the benevolent Guptas who nurtured the seeds of university education, ultimately giving birth to the venerable Nalanda, a seal bearing the name of monarch believed to be Kumar Gupta I, named Shakraditya, resonates as the founder of this hallowed institution. As students converge from the farthest corners of the world in pursuit of knowledge, there is compelling evidence of foreign monarchs contributing to the construction of structures within the Nalanda scholarly presence. Archaeological whispers even hinted generous legacy of Shailendra King from Indonesia imprinted upon the campus. Nalanda University was not merely an academic citadel. It was a sanctuary of wisdom, encompassing ten temples, classrooms, meditation chambers, monasteries, dormitories, and enchanting lakes and parks spread across eight meticulously planned compounds. It was a haven that sheltered over 10,000 students and 2,000 venerable teachers. Towering above all was a nine-story building, where diligent monks painstakingly transcribed books, kindling the flames of knowledge in individual scholars' hearts. Innovative and trailblazing, Nalanda introduced dormitories, a pioneering concept in the annals of education, accommodating 10,000 aspiring minds at its zenith and providing a haven for 2,000 professors. Nalanda beckoned students and scholars from distant lands like Korea, Japan, China, Tibet, Indonesia, Persia, and Turkey. Within these hallowed halls, the curriculum of Nalanda University encompassed the profound, from the teachings of Mahayana Buddhism to the Vedas, logic, Sanskrit grammar, medicine, Samkhya, and a kaleidoscope of subjects spanning the spectrum of knowledge. History whispers towards the saga of Ait Singh, who embarked on a decade-long odyssey at Nalanda from 675 to 685 AD, accumulating a trove of 400 Sanskrit texts containing over 500,000 verses, a testament to the university's well-endowed library. Tibetan accounts paint vivid strokes of this library, nestled within the poetic expanse of the Mukanj, comprising three colossal edifices, Ratnagara, Ratnodhati, and Ratnaranjala. The legendary Ratnasagara, a nine-storied marvel, safeguarded rare sacred works like Praniya Paramita Sutra and Tantrika treasures like Samajadukya. Tragedy soon befalls the Citadel of Enlightenment. In 1193 AD, Nalanda's walls were breached by Turkish Muslim invaders, known as Mamuls, led by Bhaktiyar Khilji. Bhaktiyar Khilji, once a chieftain in the service of Avad commander, found himself entrusted with two villages on Bihar's turbulent border, a political no-man's land. Sensing an opportunity, 
he embarked on a series of plundering raids into Bihar, reaping recognition and rewards from his superiors. Bayored by his success, Khilji cast his gaze upon a fort in Bihar, capturing it triumphantly and leaving in his wake a trail of riches. And then the unfathomable unfolds. Nalanda's peerless library, a treasure trove so vast that it cradled over 9 million manuscripts, succumbs to the flames kindled by the invaders. Traditional Tibetan narratives unveil a three-building library complex, one soaring to nine stories, guarding the holiest of manuscripts. The agonizing inferno rages on for three months, its smoke casting a veil of darkness over the nearby hills. The Persian historian Menaji Siraj paints the haunting chronicle of Nalanda's fall. Maumade Bhaktiyar, with the force of interpretity, threw himself into the postern of the gateway of place, and they captured the fortress and acquired great booty. But beneath the ashes and ruins, a grim reality emerges. Nalanda, once perceived as merely Buddhist sanctuary, conceals within its stone walls a vivid tapestry of Hindu influence. Nalanda's excavation has unraveled a profound blend of faiths and philosophies. Among the ancient artifacts discovered by ASI, one finds traces of Hindu deities. The ancient site of Goryasthana reveals 18 stone sculptural fragments spanning from post Gutta to Pala periods, including depictions of Uma Maheshwar, Surya, Vishnu, Chamunda, the birth of Buddha, and an inscribed devotive stupa, all testaments to the diversity of belief that found a home within Nalanda's venerable walls. The religious syncretism within Nalanda's precincts defies easy categorization. Even amidst the ravages of time and flames of destruction, Nalanda's spirit endured. And the Tibetan translator, Chag Lotsawa, ventured to this hallowed ground in 1235, he beheld the scars of the damage and the ravages of the looters. A 90-year-old teacher, Rahula Sribhadra, persevered, instructing a dwindling class of about 70 students. Yet, darkness still loomed on the horizon, for a tempestuous incursion by Turkish soldiers forced the remaining students into exile. Yet, against all the odds, the embers of Nalanda legacy flickered on, with the remnants of Buddhist communities striving under the meager resources until 400 CE, when Chakalaraja emerged as last patron of Nalanda's flickering light. The annihilation of Nalanda's temples, monasteries and centers of learning cast a long shadow, dimming the brilliance of ancient Indian scientific thought in mathematics, astronomy, alchemy and anatomy. The countless manuscripts reduced to cinders held the keys to centuries of wisdom. At its peak, Nalanda cradled over 2,000 teachers and nurtured the dreams of 10,000 students, all converging from diverse corners of India and beyond. Viharas like Nalanda dotted the landscape of what we now call Bihar, breathing life into the realms of education, culture and intellectual discourse for ages. To quantify the loss of Nalanda is an endeavor bound for futility. It was not merely an institution of learning that perished, not merely a tradition of philosophical and academic inquiry that shattered. Rather, it was obliteration of an entire civilization crushed and grounded to dust. Thousands of teachers and students met untimely end, and millions of manuscripts and books were reduced to smoky wisps. Sanskrit, the lifeblood of instruction and research, too was subject to a cruel blow. To say that India's damage was incalculable is an understatement. We stand perfect of a clear understanding of the vast treasury of knowledge that was ours, now forever lost to the cataclysm. Though history marks the conquest of Delhi by Mahmud Ghori in 1192 as a critical turning point, the burning of Nalanda forever altered the course of Indian history. This important chapter of our past serves as a reminder that the torch of knowledge once extinguished is irreplaceable. As we trace our roots back to Nalanda, 
we also glimpse the depth of the darkness cast by its fall. The embers of wisdom continue to smolder in the soil, reminding us of a glorious era lost to time.